members to sit together, to order and together. Um, and you've got our, we've got our count of members taken. So I'm going to announce that we have, we're making an audio recording. We're making two video recordings and we're taking notes. So anything you say will be dutifully recorded a bunch of different ways. Um, the next thing would be public comment, <coughs> though I do want to tell the members of the gallery, most of whom I think are here for stormwater, that in all likelihood we are going to continue it in ordinance till after the first of the year. Because there are a bunch of forums happening next month, there's all sorts of continued exposure to the, to the public going on. And rather than deal with it, I mean, we still have to vote to do that, and you still have your chance to make public comment if you wish to. But I would suspect tonight we're going to kick it forward to the first ordinance committee of the new year to let all of that due process take place before we, you know, get it on the council agenda and get it out of ordinance. So, and uh, there are, I think, a bunch of notices going out with the DPW mailer when these meetings are going to be. I think everybody's bored. The t people are teaming up and covering the meeting. So. We'll probably just keep it here till after the first of the year to let that due process take place and then and kick it up from there. So with that said, anyone who would like to make a public comment, please come forward, speak your piece, and let us know who you are for the record. Hi, I'm Bob Reckman. I was for 15 years a member of the Board of Public Works, half of that time as chair, That's with, during which time we built the, the new water treatment plant up in Haydenville. Um, we, I was in the city council. I was on the Stormwater Task Force as the Chamber's representative. I mean, the opportunity and gentlemen, uh, we, the delay you speak of, David, we welcome. Nothing wrong with that. It gives plenty more time to get the word out to people who, who don't know. So that's great that you have a real active plan to do that. Um, we too, the Chamber is going to have a forum on stormwater for commercial property owners. One's going to be on December the 9th at the Senior Center at 6 p.m., and there'll be another one scheduled. So we, we're trying to do the same kind of thing by letting the public know about what this is all about. I served in the task force. We did a good job. The BPW translated our desires and, and guidance into a fine ordinance. We, on the whole, think the ordinance as it stands is very good. I believe that Councillor Adams has proposed five amendments, all of which, in my opinion, support and enhance the functioning of the ordinance. So we would encourage you to improve on them if you can, but you, we would hope you would take action tonight to accept his formal amendments that they could be part of the public discussion going forward. Um, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Edward Etheridge, 64 Gothic Street, Northampton. Um, I, I, I'm also speaking on the stormwater and flood control of utility ordinance. I'm supportive. I've seen the amendments Councillor Adams has, support, has uh, put forward. I'm supportive of those. I have been a part of an informal group of the chamber that has been looking at this issue since it uh, came up. And uh, uh, the key I would just like the Ordinance Committee to remember when looking at it is it's very important to remember that this is a fee uh, and not a tax because it's perilously close to the line depending on how it's defined and implemented. Um, and obviously as a tax, it's not only subject to challenge by people in the city who would challenge it, but also the re restrictions of Proposition 2 and a half. But one has to be cautious with that. I think the principal guiding lights that we looked at when we were reviewing it all the time was that it remain a fee, despite it being broad-based, uh, and that it remain equitable uh, for all property owners in the city. And I think that that, uh, with the Department of Public Works hearings, the way they've drafted it, uh, they have been very good at doing it. One of the principles we tried to look at was make an essential uh, unit being uh, a single family uh, or two family home. That way, with the city council in charge of the fee, even though it's a fee, it's not being set by someone else that would be burdensome on the individual homeowners. Any fee is going to be burdensome. Um, but at least they have the opportunity to look at that fee in the context of a single family home, 
which will then translate into what the fees would be for the rest of the users. So the way it's been crafted uh, is very good. I think the amendments are appropriate to maintain its status or a fee. And as you move forward, uh, I just ask you to keep those uh, two things in mind, the equitable nature of it in terms of its division against all, uh, against assessed against all property owners in an equitable fashion, uh, and that it uh, remain a fee. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah. Nice back there over the podium. Yeah. Suzanne. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> the woman behind the podium. <laughs> the woman behind the dresser. <laughs> yeah, <that. clears throat> so, good evening. I'm Suzanne Beck. I'm uh, representing the Greater North, uh, Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce, and I'm a resident of Northampton on, at 691 Park Hill Road. I just um, thank you for the opportunity in the new year to really vet this out with a, a broader kind of public input. But I wanted to kind of stage how um, the ordinance as it's crafted, which the Chamber Subcommittee and Economic Devel Development Committee support, kind of the elements of it that are um, the foundation of that support. One would be that the ordinance does use the hydraulic acreage model. Um, the other would be that the city is participating as a fee-paying member or uh, part of it, um, that no general fund relief is um, provided for in the ordinance or the way the ordinance is structured. It provides, um, it's not looking to pr provide general fund relief, that the rate setting authority is separate from the management of the enterprise fund and um, that there's a cap on the amount of cost per year. And as we've worked through the process um, and kind of evaluated all the different uh, pieces to the ordinance, I, I think we can fairly say that any kind of shift or replacement of any one of those kind of foundational elements to the, or um, to the ordinance would, in our view, potentially disrupt the equity and the, the fairness of the ordinance as a whole. So um, I'm pleased that the public education process is is opening up and going forward and taking its time. Um, the one issue that we uh, that remains kind of un, unresolved from our point of view is that the there is no database that is accurate enough to pr to project for an individual property owner, commercial property owner, what their fee would be. And in our opinion, it would be best if the database were. As, as the ordinance is being reviewed, the investment in that data phase happens so that property owners can get an accurate um, read on what the fee would be. Thank you for your time. Mr. Biden. <coughs> Thank you. William Biden, Office of Planning and Sustainability. Um, there's been discussion about the so-called exemptions in, in terms of equity. Um, I just want to suggest you think about two different kinds of exemptions. The first is cities properties where I understand the argument about not relieving the city of its, its fair share of um, stormwater, which I understand. But the other is about open space parcels, whether they're publicly protected open space or privately protected open space. And I guess I'd argue that exemptions is probably the wrong term for that. It's a concept of ecological services, that open space actually reduces the amount of stormwater infrastructure we need and, and flood protection we need because open space is fine for floods, it's fine for you know, stormwater collection. So if you decide to drop municipal properties from being exempt, I understand that, but I, I think stormwater <coughs> should still be not exempt, but getting credit for the ecological services it provides them. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, I have a question for you, Mr. Bud. Yeah. It's the first time I've seen this large club back here, <coughs> and it says, Planning and Sustainability, City of Northampton. <laughs> You might, you might want to check with Alan to see if you know you really want to identify this <laughs> coming from your department. Who knows what could happen? In jokes and funny words. Anyone else for public comment? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you. Um, Councilor Freeman Daniels wanted us to talk about his committee quickly, but. I think we're going to get through the other things quick enough that maybe it'll be okay. Um, so the, the next item on the agenda is the stormwater thing. And do you want to run us through just so it's of, on record of the amendments you've proposed to that? And then we can decide if we want to incorporate them 
before we refer it. Um, and that will get it on, on the video so that people will be able to watch it. Uh, do you want me to do it? Just read them out. Yeah, just read them and describe them. Yeah. Um, amendment number one it states amend section 280 4 the definition section by adding direct costs shall mean the cost incurred in the operation and maintenance of the stormwater and flood control utility, and indirect costs shall mean employee benefits, insurance, and costs paid by the city of Northampton separately that are allocable to the direct cost of the stormwater and flood control utility. That <coughs> amendment, um, the intent of that amendment is to be consistent with what we've told the public since the beginning of this fee and to be fair to the public and not change in the late stages um, how this fee will be used. This fee is, we've heard from the beginning, is not to supplement the general fund. It's supposed to be um, solely for the purpose for which it was created. That's for stormwater and flood control maintenance. And this clarification of the definitions um, makes it clear that that's, that's not only the intent, but the outcome. Uh, that, that, that that will be the outcome. That this uh, is to only be funding the direct and indirect costs associated with the fee and nothing more. Um, <coughs> Amendment number two, it's section 280-8. And that's um, that's the purposes of the fund, and that and uh, it, what it does is deletes the first sentence and replaces it with the following. The first sentence reads: uh, Receipts from the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall be based, uh, excuse me, shall be used for the following purposes. It strikes that and replaces it with the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall only be used for the direct and indirect costs of the, util the utility, including, and then it lists the exact costs that can be used for, and that um, really completes uh, and, and, and is an aid to the, the First Amendment. Um, the Third Amendment is 280-6 in its rates, and it deletes subsection G of that section which reads, calculations of bills for each property shall be, de be determined by, by the Department of Public Works. And it replaces it with G. After calculating the billing rate for a square foot of hydraulic area in subsection D, the Board of Public Works will establish a unit rate for each of the three classes of small residential properties in accord with subsection C. So that way it actually codifies that there will be three classes of, of residential pro properties <coughs> in the ordinance itself, uh, which is actually a very important amendment. Uh, 280-6, uh, <coughs> subsection A, uh, I've, I've changed it so that it, so that it reads, uh, the annual budget for stormwater management and flood control services shall be based upon the recommendation of the Board of Public Works and shall be approved by a majority vote of the City Council. Um, and there's a reason why I did that, and it has to do with uh, the cap that I later drafted. So I'll explain that when I get to it. But that, that's how that, that's what I'm going to need to read. And 280-6, uh, in the rates section, 280-6A, beginning of the second sentence, it says, it is the intent of the city council to set the annual budget at an amount that will be sufficient to provide for a balanced operating and capital improvement budget for the stormwater management and flood control services. I've changed that to are uh, proposing to change it to the city council will set the annual budget at an amount that will be sufficient to provide for a balanced operating and capital improvement bu budget for the stormwater management and flood control services. 280-6, uh, I amended rates, but I'll actually skip that because it kind of gets subsumed into to eight, which I did more of an overhaul of the, of the, whole, of the whole section. <coughs> So I'll come back to that in a, sec in a second. 280-9. I've amended that to, well, I, the, the proposed amendment is to delete it in its, in its entirety. And that's the section on uh, exemptions for <coughs> exemptions. Do you want to hear? Yeah, 
This, this, this is the this is the uh, the section that attempts to create an exemption for agricultural and conservation. Um, I think it should be stricken in, in its entirety. And the reason why is that we heard over and over, and I agree with this premise, and I think the entire task force did, that everyone benefits from stormwater and flood control. That's every parcel, including um, agricultural land and conservation land. And there was a very clear um, mandate from this from the task force that all properties should pay. There's that they seem to be, I believe, in unanimity, in unanimity about that. Um, and that includes nonprofits, federal and state properties, and even the city. So I don't think that an exemption um, from agricultural or conservation land uh, makes any sense. I think it's treating them like the others are not being treated. I don't think it's fair. And and on top of that, the maximum they would be paying would be one hundred dollars per property. That's the maximum. And on top of that, the BBW can issue credits when it, when it, when it, when it creates its, its credit, uh, when it decides who and uh, which properties will be eligible for credits. So if, that exa if, if, if this were not stricken, as I'm recommending, um, that would be $17,000 out of the budget. Um, and so it's not nothing. That $17,000 would have to be um, subsidized by the, by, the, by the parcels that are actually paying into it. So, um, I, I, I respectfully do not think that there should be an exemption for those types of properties. <clears throat> the final um, amendment I'm proposing is, um, I'll, I'll read it out and then I'll explain to it. I'll explain it. It's 280 6 rates. And, and again, it has to do with, um, th this has to do with caps. Section A The annual budget for stormwater management and flood control services shall be based upon. The recommendations of the Board of Public Works and shall be approved by a majority vote of the City Council. The City Council will set the annual budget at an amount that will be sufficient to provide for a balanced operating and capital improvement budget for the stormwater and flood control services. For the first uh, B, for the first five fiscal years of the utility operation, the revenue raised by the utility shall not exceed $2 million per year. Beginning in the sixth year, revenue shall be adjusted based on the recommendation of the Board of Public Works, subject to the approval of the City Council as described above. As described above. The annual budget will not be raised by more than 3% of the budget of the prior fiscal year without at least six votes of the City Council. So, the purpose of this amendment is to create a cap after the five-year period expires. And the reason why I'm suggesting we do that is because I think the public, and just based on a lot of the feedback I've, I've heard, um, does not want this to increase this fee to increase dramatically um, throughout the years, as some other fees have. For example, the stormwater and fucking, uh, excuse me, the uh, water and sewer fees. So, with this, the reason why I crafted it this way is because it attempts to balance two things. I believe um, out of the seven communities in the state that have created this type of fee, two or three have already gone back to the to their, to their legislative bodies that created them and stated that the revenue coming from it is not enough. So I wanted us to, I want to have a cap in place, but also get, allow for the flexibility for that cap to be exceeded if there's a good enough reason. And so um, I suggested that, that the budget be allowed to grow by 3% each year so it can keep up with, uh, with it can, so it can grow and keep up with, with actual costs. But um, if it has to go over that for some reason, for some project that comes down the line, or for whatever reason, it can go over that amount, but it needs six votes in the city council, a super majority, so that would be an additional safeguard on, on, um, on, on it going up um, too much and too often. Um, it can only go up once a year. And so I picked a number of 3%, and there have been some good ideas floated out there about changing that to something um, Something, something else, some other, some other measure. For example, um, inflation or, some, or something like that. So I'm open-minded to considering um, something else besides three percent, because the three percent might be too infle inflexible. Um, but those are my notes. Thank you. Um, I want to just ask: Is there, since these weren't really all that available, is there any comment on these? Public comment on these prior to our discussing them. 
Please yeah. come forward and, and, and just have a ask, ask a question about the point of order. Will the committee be taking a vote on the amendments tonight? You know, it's the hearing is going to be continued. Um, we we certainly could take a vote on the amendments. We're not going to take a vote on the entire proposed ordinance. Yes, you know and that's well, something we're going to discuss now. But I just wanted to afford anyone the ability to comment on them now. Because while this while this body could vote to um, send this with a recommendation to the city council um, with with all or some or part of the amendments, it, it still then gets voted on, it still has to, the, the amendments still have to be accepted by the right. city council and another step. So. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so, uh, I just want to say that the these amendments help to clarify some of the gray areas in the original draft of the ordinance. So from the chamber's perspective, there are, uh, you know, they improve upon um, the ordinance and make it much clearer as to the purpose of the funds and how the um, annual budget is set in place. Uh, very briefly, I know I, I won't. I probably will not be on the. I will not be on the council when it comes before you. But uh, I. Um, I just want to briefly recount what happened at the Economic Development, and Housing, and Land Use Committee, um, where uh, Councilor Adams shared many of his amendments at, at that time as well. Um, I don't think there was uh, I don't think there was a majority of interest in the uh, uh, annual cap uh, after the five uh, to after the first five years, uh, and I also um, do not believe that there was a majority interest in um, in the uh, the indirect indirect cost language. Um, it was it's my belief, and I think also the belief of at least one, possibly another counselor, that uh, that language is um, confusing and vague and uh, does not uh, adequately address the city's needs and uh, doesn't allow for the streamlining of government. Um, and uh, and so I, I, I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't uh, think that the council would be well served by adding that language. And, um, and finally, um, I've said this before and I'll say it again, uh, uh, General fund relief is uh, going to be a consequence of this um, fee, no matter how you slice it. And um, I don't see that as a negative at all. Uh, I don't. I, I, I hear the arguments that uh, that it's a negative, but I don't think that they are, and uh, I don't agree with them. Thank you. My name is Jack Fortier. Um, in a previous life, I was finance director for the city, and I've um, also in a previous life, I was treasurer of uh, Hampshire College. And I've been involved with the task force of the um, chamber. And um, I wasn't going to speak because it's all been very well covered. But um, respectfully, Owen, um, I do think that the issue of general fund budget relief is a huge issue. And I think it's very important that that language gets put in there. For people like me, we've, we've talked now for months to many people in support of this ordinance. And a fundamental premise has been from the beginning that this fee is for stormwater and flood control management. If, in fact, it morphs into something where it's general fund budget relief, it will amount to the council being able to vote to, for funds that are tantamount to a two and a half override, providing direct general fund budget relief. And I think that is going to be a challenge to continue to garner support the way we have. We have a lot of momentum going. There's been a lot of great work done. And I encourage everyone to hold this path and not complicate it in ways that need not be. Thank you. Mr. Biden, you were uh, I just want to add this one thing about the uh, drop exemptions for open space. Conservation Commission did vote to urge you all to keep that in the air. Agriculture Commission has not discussed piece about undeveloped parcels, but we'll be doing that tomorrow night at that meeting. I, I think part of the issue is a lot of the changes which sound really good are about adding clarifications. Those two changes are leaving, there won't be clarity until the Board of Public Works acts in terms of the credits. So it becomes undeveloped. All right, any other comments on the uh, proposed ordinance? Uh,
Well, hearing none, let's uh, discuss them. Um, it, it's my sense that, um, that well, I thank Professor Adams mm -hmm. for doing all the work on putting these together. I am um, uh, reticent to take action on these um, before we have heard from uh, the other committees. Um, well, <coughs> certainly the Youth Commission is one that's to which this has been referred. And then, as uh, Mr. Biden mentioned, there's still the Agricultural Commission to hear about dropping. You know, so there, there are pieces of these amendments that I, I would rather um, hear from other bodies first, as our usual practice is to be the last body that, that deals with these. So I would like to hear not only from those other um, bodies, Agricultural Commission, even the Board of Public Works, I haven't heard of, um, any input from them on these amendments, but there are also the number of uh, community forums that are scheduled next month at which it would be helpful to have these um, <coughs> amendments also uh, available and um, open for discussion. And then I'd, I'd be fully prepared to act on these together in the, forums, um, in the next I have no problem with that. One thing, one thing I wanted to clarify was um, I have a completely different take on what the Edward Committee um, thought of these amendments because I was there too. And it seemed to me like Councillor Freeman Daniels and another councillor certainly did um, share what Councillor Freeman Daniels um, spoke to. However, one of the councillors wasn't present and the other councillor chairing the meeting, I didn't get any sense that he shared any reservations about any of these amendments. And on top of that, they sent it forward with no recommendation and, and, and Mike and, and they wanted more discussion on the matter, but if they were against it, they could have, they could have uh, given a negative recommendation, which they did not do. So uh, my perception of, of the Ed Lewis uh, take on this was entirely different. And we can look at the minutes and see the video, was there audio and video recording of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like that's all. And I have no objections to one through five, which really function as clarification of the intent, I think, of what the ordinance was. But um, six to cap, um, seven deleting nine, and eight dealing with the exemptions. Um, well, I think they should be made available. I really, I'm not comfortable making those changes here without another, without the next month's feedback. I, I don't think the first ones, they clarify where we are today. The others make substantive changes. And while I may end up agreeing with them, and I would like them to be available for people to discuss, I don't want to do it before it gets its next month full of process. Though, it, it you know, as, uh, as has been mentioned, it may well be what makes this, in the end, palatable to the greatest number of people is the assurances that there is a cap and, and the restrictions on exemptions. But, but I, you know, so if, if, you, if you wanted to do the first five, I'll, I'll go along with that and vote for it. Uh, but I six, seven, and eight, I'm not. Again, I prefer to just take the whole package with the, with the ordinance mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Rather than, I think it confuses the issue to try to piecemeal pull out the kind of, um, package mm -hmm. of amendments. Are you comfortable with it? Um, <clears throat> so back to our agenda. So at this point, um, since we're not going to amend it here, uh, I would accept the motion to continue uh, this ordinance until the first meeting of the newly constituted ordinance committee in January. Mm -hmm. February. February. We don't need to well, just to the first, well, the first meeting, whatever it may be, of the new ordinance committee in, in, uh, in the new year. It makes sense to we're meeting in December, right? I don't think so. Oh, okay. There's nothing else comes. Okay. And uh, we're, not before, we're not meeting before the meetings happen. The community forums. The com are like yeah, the forums are going to happen well into the month. Second, the third, the twelfth, and there's something else. I was just thinking if we were going to meet, we could just continue it again, so we don't have to yeah. continue it so far out to February. But if we're not going to meet till I don't think we are because okay. if if, um, if nothing gets sent to us. That we have to act on, we, we wouldn't meet in December. So it would be our per, the first meeting of the newly constituted ordinance committee in the new year. Okay. And we'll take it up then. And then all the feedback will be in. Well, and that makes sense just because we know that the community forums that are scheduled are scheduled at a date later than our next yeah. ordinance committee. Mm -hmm. So then they'll be done. So do we have a motion? Uh? So moved. Second. Okay. Any 
As usual. All in favor? Aye. And the next, the next one should be should be relatively quick too, and these are a bunch of ordinances and orders relative to our reorganization and having our rules conform and our ordinances conform with the new charter. And the only one on here that, uh, this, this is something that, uh, the first batch I think we can just send to council right away yeah. as group. And then this, the, the last one, which is um, the Committee on Investigations and Practices, I think we want to talk about. But all of the, everything but Committee on Hearings, Investigations and Practices, I think we can just, if you agree, just forward. Yeah, I, I move that we uh, send the positive recommendation to the City Council ordinances, amend 44-3 through amend 44 finances. Okay, any discussion about that? You want to clarify to the December 5th meeting? Or to the December 5th meeting at the City Council. all the other are showing up. Um, Yes, okay, and then we'll be together. Okay, are you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay, any more discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that brings us to our last item, which is the Committee on Hearings, Investigations, <coughs> and Practices. Excuse me. Which was sponsored by Councillor Freeman Davis. She's here. And he is here. Would you like to speak to this? Yeah. I hope we didn't keep you too extra long. No. That was one pretty quick. No, but you did catch me on on the mic now, having to put myself out as far as the uh, as far as the stormwater fee, which I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done if you had had me up earlier. <laughs> uh, I um, I crafted this and I spoke about it actually uh, in the middle of this year um, during an, an ordinance committee meeting that wasn't uh, that, that where, where Councilor Carney wasn't uh, present and. Um, it, uh, the idea is to uh, is that the the rest of the council committees have been um, rewritten and uh, and consolidated uh, by, by Councilor Adams, uh, and they're all they all follow this um, this uh, template that um, that the Culture and Rec Committee uh, thought, uh, began, which uh, Councilor Carney and, and Councilor Adams and I uh, sat on, and um, that is this uh, pattern of. Um, Using the council power to investigate, uh, but limited to the to, to the role of whatever that committee happens to be. Um, so uh, it's basically uh, treating the committee like a, uh, um, a, a like having a particular warrant from the council, a standing warrant from the council to do an investigation along the lines of whatever it is that uh, that committee is about. In the case of the culture and rec, it was cultural services. And um, so uh, what that what that left out was um, the the desire to have any kind of um, council discussion uh, or community discussion outside of those um, rather uh, fixed uh, committees. Um, so I uh, wanted to um, leave a general power of investigation uh, to a committee in in order to free up time on the council on the general council floor. Uh, from um, that kind of uh, um, that kind of uh, presentation and discussion, in order to basically to save, to save time and do business more effectively. Um, then, also, we, we often talk about um, uh, we often have this issue with when it, sometimes when it comes to um, the city council with uh, with some with resolutions and also with uh, hearings, uh, public hearings and and, um, and forums. Where we would like the council to um, have some uh, discussion about an issue, but we don't necessarily want to do it on the council floor with the full, with all the councilors there. Um, so the, the uh, desire to uh, plan effectively, plan a form effectively, to possibly even review resolutions, uh, we could have even a committee that, that this would be a committee that could also have um, be a public uh, sounding board uh, for for resolutions that the, that the council might not be ready to fully endorse and also to have um, be charged with by the full council um, a general uh, um, power of investigation which it wouldn't it's not like this committee would just be able to do whatever it wants it would typically would have to be referred by the council 
um, that des the, the, all those desires put together into this committee, which um, which was which which sits before you. Uh, so my hope is that uh, um, my hope is that this committee becomes a uh, part of the council. Uh, my expectation is that it won't be uh, it won't meet very often. Uh, it'll meet when there's a need, um, when there's a call for it. Uh, either the council wants to look into something that doesn't fall into the purview of the normal committees. It wants to look into, for instance, the practice of, of selecting auditors or something like that. And it just doesn't fit in any one committee. You refer to this committee, which is sort of a catch-all uh, discussion and investigation committee. Or um, if we're having a, a forum um, that needs planning and, and, the, and we want to sort of act as a clearinghouse um, and we want to do it in public rather than behind the scenes, uh, you could refer to this committee. Um, uh, and it can also be used to, uh, to formulate some additional best practices if, if those uh, become important to the next council. So um, my hope is that the ordinance committee would just include this with the rest of the council committee packages. Thank you. And I'm available for questions. So it's, it's, um, it's a standing committee, not an ad hoc committee, but it doesn't meet regularly. It meets when there's something specific <coughs> to that committee that comes up. Right, that would be the idea. Right. Or as I read it, it's also, it has a number of uh, conditions where it could meet. One would be at the request of two members of the council, or whether, so there are a number of um, criteria that kick off. And, and also when they choose to meet, I mean, they're, they're not prohibited, they could meet as often or as infrequently, there isn't any set number. Right, I, but although I think that that was kind of, I, I just basically took what we had put for all the other council committees, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically, you know, um, at the, you know, regularly right. but not specified how often. Yes. So in that respect, the format is very similar to the other. But in a sense, if it, it, it acts as if it's, it, it acts almost as an ad hoc committee, even though it's standing. I think that's the sense. Yeah. And and uh, so so if it's going to be used for the investig investig investigatorial purpose, uh, this ordinance requires that they give notice seven days in advance and specific questions to to which um, the presenter needs to give answers to. So it's not really something that can be used to you know throw curveballs at someone or, or, or do some sort of like gotcha game, right? And did you take this from the charter, Rick? Uh, well, um, good question. And I think um, I think that the council with the new charter has the general issue of figuring out the role of its committees. Uh, um, they, uh, they can be uh, construed broadly. Uh, but the committees, the Culture and Rec Committee, after some discussion, we had some, some very good discussion, I think, on Culture and Rec, which, which I think was before most of the other council committees were rewritten. And the discussion was that um, the committee, although sometimes it doesn't always um, meet or whatever, it, it has a vital role. Uh, and that role is that when you, meet, when, when you want to be able to get, to share information from one body of government to another, from the executive branch to the legislative branch, um, that, it, that it's, it's ready and, and sitting there and ready, and ready for that. And so we took the charter, uh, I took the charter language and put it into the committee um, for the exact, in that exact way, basically. Um, and um, so it, it is taken from the charter. And it's according, it's following all the charter rules regarding investigations. <coughs> For example, you know, if, if, if you wanted to learn about, uh, in Culture and Rec, for, for example, you wanted to learn about the use of the fields, of a certain set of fields, you'd have to write them up, those questions, and send them to the appropriate person and a copy to the mayor. The mayor part is not part of the charter, but we put it in um, in order to uh, make sure that um, all the best information is presented. So the mayor can say, well, that person probably maybe not the best person to present it. So the mayor can marshal more information for you if necessary uh, or have different people come. But when those people appear before the, any committee, any committee, they are not required to answer anything other than what's written down. Uh, so that it's not possible to, um, 
yeah, it's not possible to uh, to stray from the from the written um, language uh, unless the unless someone wants to volunteer more information or whatever. But it wouldn't be part of that of, of that presentation, uh, and that's part of the charter. And um, I think it's very valuable for our other committees to have that power, uh, which is used much more softly. It's much more it's used more <laughs> informally. Um, this committee, I think, would would probably not use it very often. Um, but uh, if but if if there's any type of investigation or discussion that wants to take place that's outside of the normal committees, <laughs> that's what this one's for. It could conceivably. The city council now could ask any of its standing committees to investigate anything within their jurisdiction. I'm assuming, you know. So if it was, they could ask, like potentially finance being asked to look into auditors, the, you know, or, or to look into came from the meeting yet, look into the concept of a residential exemption. They could say finance look into that and get back to us. I mean, so the function kind of can happen now if it falls within the jurisdiction of an existing committee that's working. But I think sometimes we do have situations we don't know really where to. I mean, I guess with the investigatorial powers, that's true. But sometimes it seems like we have uh, certain certain issues that we don't really know what to do with. Right? And that, that is that the purpose of this? Or the cost boundaries? Uh, right. I think that's. I mean, the case in the case sometimes with when you have, um, well, for example, the uh, um, for example the sidewalks, the, the uh, vibrant sidewalks resolution, uh, which. I was, you know, I was supportive of, but we, we ended up referring it to a committee, the EDLU, but we didn't really want EDLU to discuss the resolution exactly. We wanted them to prepare kind of a forum, which we're still in the process of, but the point is that EDLU didn't exa wasn't exactly designed to do that. So it would be better sometimes if, if we have a kind of a, a, a controversial resolution or something, it could be referred to this committee so they could, they could interact perhaps with the the Human Rights Commission and perhaps with other members of the public to cre to create some kind of consensus to send it forward or wherever. And, and you know, resolutions don't fall into typically they don't fall into any one of the council committees. So and and with many of our bodies being like Edlu, where they're composed of you know members that aren't necessarily council. Who knows that? Yeah, you may want to. Also, I I I do like that there's um, an emphasis on. Uh, Practices and best practices, since that was a, a focus of the city council some couple of terms back, and um, seems to have kind of fallen by the wayside. It'd be good to have a, a committee that kind of keeps keeps abreast of those. And, and just one comment from me, and then there's one thing that I want to look into further. Um, I'm not really comfortable with this committee being able to activate itself with its own vote, but that it be, you know, so rather than having a majority of the committee say they want to investigate things, I like it a little more when it's authorized to do so by the full council. Assuming it's only a majority of vote of the council it takes to get them going, but it's more a, to me it's more a, you know, you've been authorized by the full body to go do this rather than two of you deciding, you know, two of the members deciding let's go after this. And the other, the other thing that I do want to talk to the solicitor about is is what I see as a potential separation of powers issues in two, because you know the committee can require employees to come in, and that's sort of a separation thing. Where the employees work for the mayor, we don't supervise them, and that does concern me a little that we would getting be getting involved with directly scrutinizing a city employee when in fact our chain of command says we go through the mayor, who goes to the department head, who goes to the employee. And I think before I really want to move this forward, I really want to talk to the solicitor about does, what effect does that have on our relationship with the mayor's office and that chain of command. I mean, certainly if the solicitor says, you know, you're perfectly fine. You know, other legislative bodies do it all the time. You know, we see them, you know, the feds, federal congressional committees drag in and work over, you know, federal employees all the time. That's <laughs> part of what makes, keeps C-SPAN in business, you know. It's a, is that high drama, but I'd want, like to see if it messes us up. Can I, can I make just two sure. comments? <coughs> I, 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 you know, I agree. Um, it, but the, let, let, let's make sure the committee doesn't run wild, you know, because it can. It could, if it, especially if it was politically motivated. Um, the second one, uh, 
I, I don't have no objection to consulting with the solicitor, but it is one of our chartered power, one of the council's chartered mm -hmm. powers to call any member, whether it be an employee, actually, committee member. A, a, you can call a member of the a one member of the planning board or any member of a multiple member body, conservation commission or employee or the mayor. So it, um, they are. It's and the, the charter says you can that the that the council has the power to do that. So um, I don't think the solicitor would have an objection, mm -hmm. but I definitely understand that you want the majority of the council to be charging the investigative power. So I have no problem with that first part. Did this come directly out of Charter 2-7, 2-7? Yeah, it's, it's almost language? word for word. Okay, I mean, so it basically, I copied the culture and rec one, which became the general ones for all the council committees, which I then just copied for this. So it's, it's almost word for word, I think, with a little bit of punctuation change. So I, I believe we have the power. I don't ex we put the piece where the mayor is notified in there so that the mayor can the mayor can say, well, you know, we're gonna I'm gonna be there or I'm gonna send my department head there if you want to talk to the lowly clerk, you know, the lowly, you know, um, you know, parking collection attendant. Well, I'm gonna make sure that the heads of those departments are there too, um, mm -hmm. which is which is I think the I think appropriate actually. It's the part that when we were talking about it for the culture and rec, that's what the solicitor recommended. So that's what we put in. Or the solicitor said basically similar things to what you said. Then we checked the charter, and it was, although legal, we, we thought, let's everybody play nice. Let's make sure the mayor knows what's going on here. So that's kind of how that, how that happened, the ev evolution of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you for staying around. I, I would like to add, I know that that first change, there doesn't seem to be an objection to. The second change, I realize I do still worry a little bit about that relationship between the council and the city employees and clarification of that. Could, is it possible to send it forward and flag uh, you all's attention to it for his opinion? Or, or do you want to keep it in this committee so that we can look at it? Because it wouldn't then go with the other Talking about, I mean, it would kind of kick it in the next year because we were talking about not meeting in December, which would mean oh, so it would so it yeah, would, would reappear on, on the first agenda of the new year. Would you be comfortable hearing the solicitor's um, um, thoughts on this at the city council meeting? Well, maybe even before, if he does have something today, maybe it's to say about it, maybe he can give us a, a brief memorandum as soon as possible or something. Or the oh, um, council, of, council of Arch hasn't said it, had anything to say yet. So. I want to echo what Councilor Murphy is saying. I really feel I'm a little susceptible about the language here about the employees. That's what we have a city solicitor for. I would like to hear from him also on the conditions of this ordinance. I'll just let me just point, just remind you that the, this is this is the language that the council already passed for culture and rec, and is going to be considering for all the other committees come December. Mm -hmm. um, and I can show you my emails between the solicitor and myself where he yeah. he had he had a similar issue. Yeah. It turns out that it is completely within the council's power to do so, mm -hmm. uh, and we added the mayor mm -hmm. because. Be because of that, that concern. So okay. I, I don't, I, I mean, I think um, my, my request is that this go with the rest of the package. Uh, and I'm, I'm very confident that your concerns will be mollified. But, I, but the other issue, I think if you could amend that tonight and strike the majority members mm -hmm. or whatever, then I'm, okay. that'd be great. Okay. Also, I mean, uh, it's, uh, I'm not concerned about this directly from the charter. But if there is concern, that's why I think, you know, maybe the best way forward is to, is to send it forward yeah, to and ask and, 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 right. and, and, and have a solicitor yeah. way and just to, just to yeah. give them any concerns. So if there's, there are any. What, what I would be comfortable with, we, we amend one, as we discussed, 
and then we send it forward uh, to appear on the council once a memorandum from the solicitor is attached to it. And we know that will happen before the end of the year, okay. especially if the, if the solicitor has already dealt with this, then the solicitor is going to be able to attach an amendment saying yes or no or touch the language up or whatever. So it has a chance to get out of here this year. So do we have a motion to uh, amend one to strike or when a majority of committee members votes to investigate and that way would only come? Move to strike one. Second. Okay. You good with that, Mary? You know what we're doing? Right after city council. Yeah, from the city council. Yeah. All right, we, that was a motion. Okay. Second, any discussion? Okay. Aye. Okay. <coughs> and then, is there any problem with, I, I have no problem if you want to move this so long as it reaches council when it has its attachment from, from Alan that he's good with the language. You want to specify December 5th then, like the others? That would give them time. That would give them time. Though I do want that memo to be there so that we're comfortable that the language would work for and everything. And it should be, he should be able to do it if he's already, you know, Councilor Freeman Daniels has already had this discussion with him and he's, it's going to be a quick one, so. I move to send this vote to the Fair City Council for the positive recommendation to December, what did you say? Yeah. December 5th, um, provided that the solicitor has an opportunity to um, look at it before that point and address any concerns that you may have? With the, I would say address the specific concerns that we raised. In, in, in number two. Yeah. yeah. The rest of it. All right. We're going to offer a uh, um, motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And back to our agenda. That is everything on our agenda. We take it here. So is there any new business with any members? Mm -hmm. Then a motion to adjourn. So moved.